Hello, this is Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio USA. And this is a tutorial video on how to set up the audio monitoring within your IDA8 mass notification system controller. Let's get started. I will launch my AT Studio software and I will close out my device management window here. Now setting up the audio monitoring circuit is very, very, very easy. One thing to remember is every IDA8 unit have eight supervised or monitored audio outputs. You can have eight separate amplifiers, one for each channel up to 1000 watts peak at 70 volts and runs roughly about 750 watt RMS on each single circuit. To set up monitoring you will have a monitor out C and a monitor out D. These are your zones 1 through 4 and zones 5 through 8 on the back of the unit. So this is where we route any of the audio within our system to these output circuits. And as you can see, we can control their volume separately, just like you would any other output. The only difference is these are monitored for line integrity. To set that up, I am actually here on this node right here, number one. This is my channel that I actually have hooked up to an amplifier and a speaker. To go into monitoring, go to your devices tab right up here to the upper left and you'll have all your devices. Here's my controller and my slave unit. What you want to do for each unit is right click on the unit. I'll just try it again. Right click and you bring up the sub properties window and go to monitor. And this brings up the audio monitoring tab. One thing to keep in mind, by default monitoring will always be enabled and global will always be enabled. So if you want to change any of these, this is the point where you would go and actually change your settings globally whether you wanted monitoring enabled or disabled globally. So if you want any monitoring on any amplifier or any circuit you have to make sure you enable monitoring by clicking on this field right here. Without that the system will ignore any faults on your amplifiers or speakers. One thing I will do also is I am online here so I'll close this and we will go offline because we cannot make any global changes to the monitoring while you're connected. So we'll go back to our devices tab, right click on our controller, go to monitoring, and I do want to enable monitor. I do want to enable leakage, which is if it detects any leakage between the IDA8's output, which goes to the balanced input of the amplifier, and then the amplified output back to the circuit, unloaded and loaded, it will see that. So if there's anything broke or anything's grounded, that will give you an indication that there's a problem between the IDA8 and the amplifier. Anything that says line A or B monitor issues, like whether it's a short or open, it'll give you a line A or B fault, and that is the actual speaker line having a problem. We'll get more to that here in a second. So one thing you want to make sure is you enabled monitoring and whether you want leakage on or not. And leakage can be on or off depending on the amplifier. Global monitor means that you can set global thresholds for all your amplifiers and all your speakers and then they all will follow that same one. Now you can enable it and then you can actually turn it off for certain circuits. So it's probably a good idea just to leave these checked. But you can disable global monitoring and leakage if you want. Now the other tab you need to go to is your zone settings. And here are your eight zones. You cannot name these. This is just how they are. You can enable or disable monitoring for every single zone. And I have zone five here, so I will keep that checked or enabled. You can also say, do I have a backup amplifier for each of these zones? And I do not have a backup amplifier on my system, so I can uncheck that. If it doesn't see a backup amplifier, it hasn't been enabled, whether they're checked or not will not matter to the operation of the system. Also the mode, 0 dB is if you're feeding the balance line output to an amplifier, but the amplified return is not coming back through the IDA8 for supervision. If that is the case, then just leave it at 0 dB, which means monitoring will be turned off for that circuit. If you are using it in distributed mode, just make sure you check it for distributed 25, 70, or 100 volt. They're all, that's just the distributed mode as you can see right here. So I got my circuit 5. I'm set up for that mode. And the tolerance, we, if it's set up for global, which is what this check is, if it's not global, I can make changes to this as I want, and it doesn't affect anything else. These are one hole 
percentages and these are actually tenths of a percent up and down if I set it for global you'll watch all of these go up or down as I change the value that way I can set them all at the same time so let's just say 50 percent because I only have one 40 watt speaker here I could go up or down with the arrows or I can even go here and type 50 right there and there we go now the other tab you need to go to is normal amplifier these are your main or primary amplifiers normal and backup are your two types I have no monitoring on my circuits 1 through 4 and 6 through 8 because I only have an amplifier hooked up to circuit 5 once again here's my tolerance that I could set I could do it individually or I could actually say global and change them all globally as you can see there backup amplifier it's the exact same settings as you can see right here now one thing about the backup amplifier down here notice this isn't even there but the minute I go to the backup amplifier tab there is this little tab at the bottom that says amplifier amount this is very important this is where you actually set how many backup amplifiers do you have on the system also tone settings the default is 20 kilohertz for the supervisory tone if you have a digital amplifier you can actually change this to 18k if for whatever reason that digital amplifier has a brick wall filter that's right at or just below 20 kilohertz it will not pass a 20 kilohertz sine wave if that's the case we have it where you can switch it to 18k there we go enable 1k tone you can turn this on or off when you first get references within a speaker circuit it will give you a really quick 1k double beep like beep beep you can actually listen to it out there and you know you got the right circuit if you don't want to enable that then just turn that off like I can do here but I'll leave it on so you can actually hear it in the background when we're setting this up and you can also set a start and end period when it does that beep as well just to send the test tone out there if you get your references it's continually monitoring the system we set up all those so let's go back up here we can go to our zone settings here and it automatically goes up here at the top to your zone monitors if I switch to net amplifiers normal backup it switches up here at the top as well once I've done all of these global settings let's go up here and compile there we go and we will store because remember you cannot make any of these settings while you're online those settings or configuration settings must be done when you're offline in program mode alright we'll turn on the audio and we'll go online now I can close it now you notice when I'm in either one of these the only one I have um, enabled for backup or monitoring actually has get reference and reset reference tabs open if we go to the zone settings same thing there's my zone 5 and there's a get reference you could say get all references and it would go through every single amplifier and every single speaker circuit and if you're near the unit you will hear all the relays clicking in and out as it switches between one output and one amplifier circuit and another and also global get references would be you're going to get all the global references and reset we'll get back to, you, to that in a second but first of all let's just do a get reference for circuit number five so I'm going to click here and hopefully you heard the 1k double beep tone that was because we enabled the 1k tone in our settings that's done and as we can see right here the leakage is fine we're at 10 mega ohms there's no leakage going on my reference a is 100.9 ohms uh, I have nothing hooked to my line B output on zone 5 and the reference between these two is the same obviously and it's on the normal amp that's the measurement and the differences is in the hundreds and thousands of percentage and the wattage that it's looking at at 70 volt is 48.85 and it's a 40 watt speaker and it says it's about 48 watts which is about right also on your circuits up here this is where you set it for the voltage and you can do this while you're actually online you can see the measurement when we got the reference it thinks it's a lot higher at 100 volts and a lot lower at 25 volts but we're actually hooked up at 70 volts and that's right so also make sure that these are correct as well if we go to our normal amplifier let's get a reference on our amplifier there we go and the amplifier reads an unloaded reference and it reads it under full load reference and that's the measurement that it's reading currently so as long as this measurement stays within your tolerances that you set here in percentages you are nice the minute it goes outside of that tolerance that you set for each circuit is when you're going to get a fault 
The other thing is if you have a short on a speaker line, the system will protect itself and it will disconnect that output automatically if there's a short or a ground on the positive leg that produces an overload. And when that happens, you'll get your error. Then at that point, once you fix the system, that is where you have a reset reference comes in. The reset reference will allow you to reset that system. And once you've repaired your short or ground on the positive leg, you can click reset, which I'll do here. There you go. And then you can say reget. You heard the beep. And it goes back out and gets the new reference. Once you do this, this is the measurement that it's reading against all the time. And you can actually see the differences. And this is what it's currently measuring live. And you can watch it. You want to see it's right at 100.3, 100.2, 101.1. The difference is 0.21. The minute this goes over your tolerance, that is where you're going to get your line error. To demonstrate this, I am actually going to turn on my Terra Manager because any of these faults are displayed across your Terra Manager screen under your device monitor window right here. Also, you will see any major speaker or amplifier faults actually will change the color of your zone image button, which I have one right here that's set up for demo. That's hooked up to my IDA8 over my network switch. It will actually flash that to the fault color. And the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the line level outputs that feed the amplifier input. They are disconnected now and it measures it two or three times to make sure it comes through and you will hear the fault tone. There we go. And you can see on there it says zone 5 normal amp fail and it actually says my demo IDA8 and it's unit number one uh, one on there. So it's telling me zone 5 of my unit. Now and you can hear it beeping on the front panel and actually on the front panel it says the exact same thing normal amp error for zone 5. All right. So now I will plug this back in. This is the line level output of the ID8 going to the input of the amplifier. There you go. All right, now I am going to unplug the 70 volt amplifier output coming back into the ID8 system or the amplified returns. And I just unplug this now. There you go. The trouble comes in. And as you can see, it says the same thing. It's the same amplifier error on the same circuit. All right. One thing I wanted to show you really quick while this is in trouble, we'll go back to our monitoring, right click, go to monitor, and we'll go to our amplifier circuit. And as you can see the measurement, it's reading way, way, way under. And you can see it's supposed to be measuring right up around 50 something. The unloaded reference is way up now. And this is what it's measuring. And that's why we have a trouble on there. So let me plug this back in. And once again, this is the 70 volt amplified return. And you can see immediately the measurement went right back up to where it should be. If I go back to Terra Manager, this will disappear here in a second. There you go. So now it's cleaned up. Let's do the actual speaker output. I'm unplugging the 70 volt speaker output from Zone 5 of the IDA8. Let's unplug now. There you go. We got our flashing red on Zone 5. Line A is open. So that is good. If we go right to our monitor again and we can show the difference is 99 percent because now the reference is 100 but now it's reading that the measurement on that line is open and that is the problem so let's go ahead and plug this back in and you can see the measurements almost immediately it comes up quickly it measures it two or three times to make sure everything's back and stable and as you can see automatically it goes away on the Terra manager all right, so that is a very quick demo, and like I said, it was very easy on how to set up your monitoring in your system. If you had a short on your line, instead of open, it would say short, and it, then you would have to go in after you fixed it. You would have to do your global reset. If it was still shorted, it would go right back into trouble, open it up. But once you fixed it, then reset all references, or you can say reset that one reference, and then go get it again, and set your baseline, and you're off and running. You can do this at any time. You can look at these measurements. You can get references and reset only when you're online. But if you're changing any of your settings or tolerances, that can only be done when you're offline. This helps you get started with your IDA8 and setting up your line supervision. Thank you once again, and please have a terrific day.